So um, let's get started, shall we? I'm Kylie. I'm from the Only Transfer Office of Portland Baptist University. I'm happy to see all of you here at the Inno Centre, as well as our participants on Zoom. Before we start today, I'd like to ask you all a very simple question. Um, what do you think is the failure rate of young ventures? Anyone? Wild guess? 80%? Anyone else? No? Actually, it's extremely high, over 90%. But have you ever wondered, why is that? One of the key reasons is the wrong or incomplete market identification, which results in wrong product design or specification. This afternoon, we are honored to have Mr. Frederick Young, currently adjunct professor of the Penn University of Hong Kong here, to share with us the six W's approach we can all use to correctly identify the market. To confirm what your startup is offering actually meets the market needs. Mr. Young is a frequent speaker in universities and incubators, incubators on entrepreneurship, market identification, validation, and investment pitching. He was the former head of incubation of the Hong Kong Science and Technology Park Corporation. In 2017 and 2018, he served as the head executive of the Hong Kong IC Award startup categories. In this seminar today, Mr. Young will analyze some failure cases together with us so that we may all avoid making similar mistakes. All right, so let's welcome our speaker today, Mr. Frederick Young, please. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, live and uh, also online on the happy basis. Uh, it is my pleasure to be here uh, sharing with you my experience on this particular topic. Uh, uh, let me get back to the Otherwise, uh, advance. Now, uh, let me just introduce to you, you know, the importance of my application. So, let's start. Uh, uh, today, it will not necessary for you take uh, photo presentation uh, because afterwards I will share with you the complete PowerPoint on one very very simple addition is that you know at the end of the seminar there will be a uh, online QR code for survey so after you complete and send it back to me I will give you a call but of course you know you have let me have your email address and then I will send the complete PowerPoint to you within, let's say, three days, okay? Right. Uh, so, this is for you for today and for life. Uh, I already introduced the uh, background myself. Uh, I'm not a professional teacher. I happen to start to teach and present on seminars after I retire. So, but you know, I have a passion for teaching because I I was a very naughty student when I was in primary school. So I always dreamed that you know after I grow up and I will become a teacher. And then I will start to teach my primary school students. But of course, you know, we cannot do the same now. We go to the same So I will be hitting you. Now, so this is today's agenda. I'll be introducing the six study approach and explain the details. And then I will share with you a success case. Now, because of the time limit, I will be able to share everything on 
history, but I will summarize why Cao Zhe Dao Man, Cao Zhe Dao Man, is a success and why it's a take into consideration of the six of them. Because I, my belief is that uh, we can always learn more by people's failure. So I'll be sharing with you two of my favorites. The Exubera, which is a uh, medical, which is a drug. And then the other is Hong Kong bicycle, which you know, in Hong Kong, that we are all familiar with. The reason for sharing the Exubera is that even though we do not have a medical or biology background in our study or in the work, we should be able to understand and know why it doesn't work. But somehow Pfizer did not. Hong Kong share bicycle, it is a very, very interesting case that all of the six of them, to my understanding and my analysis, they did it all wrong. Very, very difficult to find a case that all the six of you for company, they did it all wrong. And then Hong Kong Food Truck, uh, probably you are aware that, okay, we don't have enough time for that, but I'm sure you are aware that uh, in, uh, on the 1st of June this year, they will close it down. So technically, it's not a success case, even though it was initiated by the government. I try not to use the word failure. And King Labs, King Labs is actually a unit in Hong Kong that closed down. Okay, so even a, as big as a unicorn, so many people invested in so much money and in such a valuation, it can still fail. We always talk about innovative technology. Very seldom, or we never talk about creative technology. Because there, to me, there is a difference between creative and innovative. Innovative is new and better. To me, creative is new, but not necessarily better. I'm not, uh, you know, minimizing the effects of people in the creative industry. I mean, there are lovely people, you know, they're really great. But in order to be better, I have a definition. This is what the customer wants, okay? And then, even though they want, the product should be technically, operationally, and financially. Otherwise, it is not innovative. It is better value for money. So, innovation starts with conflict. Value is the combination of these two. The more the conflict, the more the innovation, and more available. Now, we always heard about, okay, let's, people always talk about, let's think out of the box. To me, you are only doing half of what you should be doing. The new thinking that I think should be think out from the box. Because if you think out of the box, you are still inside the box, and then you start to think about things outside. You are still confined within a certain area. But if you think out from the box, that means you are stepping outside of the box and then you start to speak. Then your scope and your view will be to be a lot better. Think about, you know, that is a uh, Swiss army knife. Before they invented the Swiss army knife, you have to, for that, combination. You have to carry a scissors, a toothpick, a small pen knife, and something that you try to sew your nail after you clip it, right? But then you have Swiss Army knife, you put everything together. If you buy all the four things separately, probably you pay something like between 40 to 50 hundred dollars. But if you don't buy Swiss Army knife like that, probably it will cost you something more than 20. So the value starts from innovation, the thinking out from the box. That piece of shame is probably my mother or grandmother used to. But it is difficult to carry outside of the house. So people think about, okay, why don't we have a fan that is foldable? Now this is the new generation of foldable fan, which is plastic. 
The older version is either flow or paper, but comes to be broken and worn out after a set of time. So they just think on class is good. But then what about carrying that span if you go on a hiking? And then you carry your knapsack and so on and so forth, and then you started to climb a hill. You can't do that. So people started to carry a fan like that. But then you know if you started to climb something, climb a hill, you better have that. So innovation starts from thinking out from the box. This is what Henry was said before the invention of a motor car. If I had asked my customers what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse. Okay, bring me a faster horse that can run faster and you know, last longer. But then, if you think out from the box, what is the alternative of having a horse? Why don't you have something that will not technically will not die? But of course, you, know, you have to change your company. That uh, cylinder is what I have in my little apartment in the mainland. Before I know that tire, that invented something like that. Who said, you know, a water cylinder in the bathroom should be cylindrical shape? No, nobody said that. But somehow it has been done for so many years. So, I started to think about the contract. So it got a better looking water cylinder that you can put things on top. Not exactly beautiful, but it is useful. There are other applications. So you all have a business or you are thinking about starting a business. So to start a business, you must come up with a product. Or service, you know, otherwise, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to sell? Your business, you have to sell something. So that is your product. So I'll be using product together with service. When I mention about product, I have to, it can be a service. Ah. Some of you may be discouraged. I hope I won't be discouraging. In order to have a startup, the prerequisite of a startup entrepreneur is that you must have the domain knowledge and the technical and production knowledge, meaning you must know how the market works because you are a startup. You are not Procter and Gamble, you are not CSL, you are not Samsung, you are not Apple. So you have to do everything. So you must know how the market works, which is what I call the domain knowledge. And then you must know how to produce it on a technical basis. You should not be outsourcing your production of your product. If you want to outsource your software design, the rule of thumb is that you should only outsource roughly about 30%. And that is the simple coding. All the core development and all the things should be from yourself. Because otherwise, people will not invest in you. So make sure you have the right product for the targeted market by going through a proper market identification to test and validate your better proposition. You should come up with the right product to discourage you again, but you know, this is not intention, or you have to decide to modify or change your product, or even decided to drop the product and do something else. Or go look for somebody else because you find out you have a problem with the market. So, okay, why market identification is so important? Because from a survey by TV Insight in the year 2019, top 20 reasons for startup fail 42% there is no market. Need. 42% of the failure because of no market. The market doesn't want your product. It's not 42%. You know, I'm not out of cash, not the right team, so on and so forth. Uh, you know, 
Now, so when we do the product identification or the market identification, basically it can be in all scenarios. When you want to design and develop a new product, you have nothing, you have a startup, you want to start something new. Or if you are an existing company, but your product is not selling well, go back and look into it using the market and fix up your product. Or if your product is already doing well in a certain market, but you want to expand your market and sell more, you can also use market identification and six W approach to do it. So basically, you know, one size fits all. Ah, so this is what I call the six W approach. Uh, you cannot find it in the book because you know, I didn't publish the book. In Chinese, I try to put it in four, five, six, the six pole. Okay, so this is what the six pole. Now, for market identification or value proposition in universities, these are the two most popular books that has ever been taught in the last 10 years. So the two professors probably are very rich. They have a lot of the books because it's used by the university, a lot of students work. They talk about very proposition canvas, business model canvas, basically minimum model. These are the things, these are the terms probably a lot of you have heard about. They are really good. Sometimes they also talk about both other concepts, competitive uh, integration canvas as well. To me, this is an extremely good approach to validate the very proposition. Extremely good. But to me, they are what I call a one on one You know, it's a feast. You probably will take, I mean, for the feast itself, I mean, if you really want to eat it, it will take you two days to eat, right? I have taught using this approach of these two books. Uh, a professor, I assist a professor and we try to do it in, uh, in two days. The students are all PhDs and postdocs. I thought that if they get 50% out of the course, because it's just too much to swallow even for the dogs. You know, teachers like to do that because you know it's very interactive, extremely interactive. You know, students like it, teachers like it. But this is a very proposition canvas. This is simple, but if you started to get into the business model canvas. Hmm. It is so complicated, but it is good. For those of you who are interested, you know, some of you, I'm sure, you know, like to read books. It's available from the Hong Kong Library. Go to the, uh, the library app called my library and uh, so you can go and get this book for free. Six of your approach, what I call is, if I want to be modest, is what I call a five star restaurant fast food. It's quick. It's basically doing about the same thing as the two books, but on a different approach. I think it is easy to remember because the six of you, why, what, who, where, when, and how, you have all heard about it. So it's simple to remember and easy to come back to the product to go through the process. Okay. Why? Okay, so let's start with the first step. Why? Ask yourself, why do we need this problem? What is the market needs, the wants, and the must? What are the existing product offers? Satisfy the market. Now, if you do that, that means you are doing a competitive analysis. Otherwise, you won't be 
able to know what are the existing models. So this is your competition. So you are doing a competitive model. So what is the market gap? This is what the market wants. This is existing offering. So there's a gap, right? The pain point. So you heard about the pain point. So this is the pain point. So what is the pain point? So create your product to satisfy the market gap as for the existing model. That's it. So you know. So this is it. The market needs the green one, current product offering. That is, yeah, the red one. I mean, the, the red uh, characters. This is where the very top position is. You propose a value to satisfy some of the needs that your competitors are not offering. So that is your market niche. So that is the market pain. And then you do the blue thing. Now, so what are musts and what are want? Must are functions that if you do not have it, the customer will not buy. It. That's all. So you must have it, otherwise the customer will not buy. It. So this is the must. The want is just you know what we call icing of the cake. You add to the buying decision. Move the customer to buy, make a decision quick. So think about the product that you have in mind. Whether your value proposition is a must or a want. When it is a want, you are on a scale of one to ten. You are on one which very, very minimal want, or you are on ten or nine. Which is very close to a must. Think about it. Okay. So, why? Now, a lot of companies fail on a couple of areas. One is why. Sometimes they will overfail on what? What market or what markets this product is trying to serve? Ask yourself again, is this product really what the customer will buy? Ask again. Now, if you ask again, then you are doing a market study on why you have done a competitive analysis on what you are doing in market study. Is this what the really customer will buy? Now, from my uh, Years of uh, having the information of the science, but what of companies say, you know, I'm doing a uh, software which is a CRM or SME. Then I started to ask, but I, I really want to kill it. It is like okay. And SME, by definition, in Hong Kong, of all those companies, less than, less than 50 people, meaning from one to it's an SME. If you are doing a CRM for the SME, that means you are also doing a CRM for the mom and pop shop or the grandfather and grandmother shop selling cigarettes and candy around the world. I'm sure they do not do that. So please be more specific. Specify the boundary. What is the industry? What is the customer size? Whether you are talking about a high end a mid range or low end market. Fine. So you research the market. What is the size? The size is quantity times value. Value meaning to unify. Total potential market, total addressable market, and total target market. Let me give you an example of this. Two. Imagine you are doing a drug again for diabetes. Okay, a drug for diabetes. The total potential market of all those people having diabetes. Okay, Potent, total potential market. Everybody in the world or in the place having diabetes. What is the total addressable market? Now, for people having diabetes, some of the people do not know they have diabetes. Technically, they have diabetes, but they never check and they have no symptoms. But they have diabetes, but they don't know. 
So your drug cannot be selling to those people who do not know their diabetes. So the address of those people who know their diabetes. So less than. Now, what about the targeted market? Okay, you have you know your diabetes. So that is your total do your addressable market. But there are people who know that they have diabetes, but they do not want to take any medicine. They do not want to take any drugs. Because they know that no, they will be better off having no medicine. Or maybe you know they are already 95 years old. They really don't want to take any diabetes drugs because they are already 95. So the targeted market are those people who have diabetes, who know their diabetes, and want to be treated with medicine. So you will be an even smaller number. And then what about the flow of this market? Now, the practice, the current practice and the preferred practice. Now, when people talk about the practice, they always talk about the current practice. But let's think outside of the box or outside from the box. The preferred practice. Okay. Imagine before we have Taobao, before we have Timo, before we have Dingdong. People always want, people that want to buy a refrigerator, they have to go to a place that sells a refrigerator. Imagine you are in a town in China, a very small one, with 100 people. I'm sure there are no shops in 100 people village selling refrigerators. So you have to go to a place, go to a town, with a shop that sells refrigerator. Probably it will take you at least half a day to go from the village to a town selling refrigerator. And then take you another half day to come back. Plus the fact that you have to carry his the refrigerator from the shop to the little village. How can you do that? But then Alibaba thought about okay, why don't we do it online? So that is the preferred market. That is the preferred practice. You don't go to a shop, you go online. But of course, you don't need to know. That's why I go to the If you do not know it, then you go to the uh, community center in the small village of 100 people, you know, the office, uh, you have to do it. And this is the change. The market change and the economy change. And competitors. And competitive. Now, a lot of people talk about competitive, they talk about the competitive product. They have forgotten about the competitive com the, the product, the competitive product that the company behind the product itself. So if you go to the go to the, the get into the China market, people always think of people always talk about if you are going to get into the market that the ATM extent is you know, Alibaba, Taobao. Uh, in Taiwan and uh, down is already in the market. You probably get in trouble because they are so big. They are, they are so rich. There are so many people marketing. There are so many people in the exposing area. So you probably get in trouble. The thing about the market that you have to find. Think outside from the box. Anything else, any market. When Uber started to affect the Uber transportation, and now they started to have the Uber Eats in Hong Kong, I think they dropped it. So, what are the possible markets? If Uber Rice, when they started with Uber Rice, they think that if they can think about Delivering food using open rights, then probably you don't have uh, food panda, you don't have uh, all this in Hong Kong. What is the size of the market? Think about hopefully the market is large, expanding, and untapped. Now, this would be ideal if your market size and the market is large, expanding. And now, if you do that, then you are doing part of a financial analysis. How big is the market? 
project three years, five years. Then you are doing a financial analysis part of it. You are doing a financial projection of the revenue, but also you haven't done your course. Right? So I'm talking about part of it. geographic possibility, your technical and production capability. Now, sometimes think about what I call the slack configuration. Social, legal, environmental, political, and technology or consideration. Sometimes this lack of consideration may not necessarily apply to your particular work of research, but it would be nice to go through it with a desk. Any technology barrier or competition? Who knows who she is? Anyone know? I I have a little prize for those of you who say who, who know who she is. Sorry. Thank you very much. You know, this is uh, the photo that I got from Cape uh, I have a series of what better photos, but I cannot show it to you because you know, the uh, professional photographer gave it to me and asked that I can show it, but I cannot distribute it. So, because I'm distributing my uh, album, so I cannot use that. For those of you who are interested, I'll show it to you. Some of the best pictures you have ever seen on this. Anyway, so we are not talking about the pillar chain. So, who? Now, who is another area that a lot of companies fail because they didn't analyze or consider the who? Who will buy and who will use it? Now, there's a difference between a customer and an end user. When you talk about other than just the customer and end user, think about the supporters and the end user. And the recommenders and the blockers or even the separate ones. The separate ones, if I even have a worse impact to your product than a blocker. A blocker just block a separate will do something to harm your product. Who we talk about the market setting, the traditional demographics, and now when you have the mobile apps and the uh, internet, then you have another set of demographics. Very simple for customer and end users. Customers are those who pay the bill. End users are those who pay the product, who, who use the product. Anyone can name a product that the customer will never use. The one who pays will never use. And the user will never pay. The user cannot even talk about what brand to buy. Can you name a product that the customer will never use and the user will have no say to buy? A lot of so when you say, no? they give new formula, Python, computer Python. The customer who buy are the parents. The parents will not drink the milk powder, right? The baby formula. The baby can never say what brand to buy. So think about customers and end users. When you started to sell and market your product. Now this is the traditional demographics that you learn, you know, at least what I learned when I was in business school. The professor talked about you know traditional demographics, sex, age, income, so on and so forth. Now, sometimes very difficult to ask or do a survey on social class. If people ask me, hey Fred, hey, Fred, what is your social class? So sort of difficult to say, okay, you know, I'm middle class, I'm middle class, I'm middle class, whatever. But you can find out when you start to ask people where they live. People if they're not telling you where they live. 
これは the best one they can think of. What is your moral justification? I can remember many, many years ago there was a teacher in one of the Ligas English universities, the mid-levels of Hong Kong, when they interview students for primary school together with the uh, parents, usually the mother. They will ask the kid or the mother, how, how did you come for this interview? What transportation did you use? If you say, I walk then you know, say, okay, ah, uh, this guy, you know, living in the corner of so he is, you know, I'm in the front and then you have the best seat in front. If you say, I take a bus, probably, you know, they should. If you say, I come by taxi, they probably will still shoot. If you say, okay, my, uh, my mother drive me here, then probably it is. But if you say, as a chauffeur or a driver taking me here and he park the car outside, then you have many, many things. Then you probably can go to the office and pay the school fee. So, who's so fast? Occupation religion notice. Now we have the new era, we have the internet, we have the apps, we have the mobile phone, then we try to find out people's websites, the browsing habit, whether you are using the internet for, for work or for pleasure. Those who have the views on so forth. Wait. Where is it bought and where is it used? Okay. In which country, which region, which city, urban areas of urban or countryside, climate, city size, population density, on and on. Now, there are a lot of things to consider. Not necessarily all will have an impact on your product. But think about it. When it doesn't matter, you know, just skip and go to the right. When is the product bought and when is the product used? Back about four to five years ago, there was a research, or not exactly research, there was a, there was a publication in the of China. They talked about, you know, even in Hong Kong, we still have to. Uh, the old telephone said that, hey Fred, uh, your daughter just met a car accident. She is now in the hospital. What uh, you need to do, you need to deposit 50,000 RMB to this bank account, otherwise you need to Or hi Fred, your son got into trouble and uh, he's now in the police station. Why don't you develop 100,000 RMB in this account? Otherwise, then you started to call your daughter, you started to call your son, and if they do not answer five times in the next two hours, you probably will delete it. And then you go to the bank and deposit it. Now, the publications from the government talk about when those bad people call you, usually between eight o'clock in the morning and eleven o'clock. Majority of the calls because that is the time that your son and daughter go to work, traveling in the bus, sort of the transportation, or they are there at school, attending a class, having a meeting with the boss, having a meeting with the customer at the home. Imagine if these dead people got one stupid people to deposit 50 to 1,000 RMB. And he is only working part time in the morning, sipping coffee at home or in Starbucks, and then got something like 50 to 5,000, uh, 50 to 1,000, 400,000 RMD every month. This is one of the best jobs that you can ever find. But I'm not encouraging you to do that. You know, you are, I mean, this is against the law, you are just short. You know, So, in terms of time, time of the day. Sometimes, because the time is very important, when you sell your product. 
So all these bad people said the product, but they were called the Now, now, I'm not the people's product also failed to meet the most important issue. I mean, all, okay, all are important, but why, who, and how? How is it both to affect the fulfillment of the logistic and so on? So, how to do it? Sometimes you have that online, offline, Online to offline, all the placement, so on and so forth. Now, imagine you are buying things from Taobao. It is a very, very complicated process of logistics of how to buy from Taobao. So basically, it's online. You place your order, you click your, uh, your shopping cart, and then you know you go through the shopping cart, and then the payment, acknowledge your payment. Delivery confirmation when they will deliver the actual shipment. You receive the goods, you have to sign or the order, sometimes you have to sign. And if you are not satisfied, you return the goods. How you return it, how they give it back to you, either the product or the money. It is very, very complicated. Imagine Alibaba, Taobao, the first time when you launch. It is such a complicated thing. But they are successful. How to use it? How it is used? Involves installation, operation, manual, so on and so forth. Sometimes it is difficult. Imagine you will buy online an air conditioner, which is a split unit. Okay, where the CPU, you know, and you think that get the code and all this to two separate units. Basically, it is extremely difficult to buy it online. It is different from a refrigerator that you can just plug. Right? Now, sometimes people think about collecting big data, they will probably not stop to the data. Sometimes you can. imagine you talk about big data, but it doesn't work. We'll talk about it and we share that. So market identification, good market identification, MI. To help to conceive, design, fine tune, and expand the market of your product. Basically, you do a lot of things. Right? So, six of them. Again, why, what, who, where, when, and how. Six of them. Why we talk about success case? success case? Because we can look at it and think about what are the six W that they have considered and why they work at that time. The success cases to me is very, very difficult to repeat because time, management, market, environment, Social condition and all these to change and different. Now, I love talk. I love to talk about failure cases because you can look at why they fail. What are the six W's that they did not do on wrongly consider? Okay, let's have a summary of the success of Delta Down. Now, when Delta Dharma was launched, it was called Delta Dharma, Delta Dharma. Now, it is called Delta Dipo. It's a map. When they launched a couple of years, actually, you know, this, this is the statistics about two years ago, the Delta map got 31% market share versus the competition, the competition of I do of 26. Okay. Delta Dawn actually when they launched, the company set up 2001, they launched 2004, it was only used in Shanghai. Okay, Shanghai company. And they are only offering to a few brands of 
one of the expenses for the vehicle at that time. The safety is the MW, so how the prospect is, but somehow Honda also uses it. It is only available in those five brands of China, basically in China. But then, you know, the listed in NASDAQ, a in 2007. 2007, they also cover Hong Kong and Macau. Alibaba in the year 2003 bought 28% for 290 million US dollars. One year later, they paid 1,500 million US dollars to buy the bank. Now, that is a lot of money. You count the number of zeros. That's a lot. Just something like 13 years of this from incorporation. There was a reason why Alibaba bought the company. Because at, at, at that time, in the year 2014, Alibaba doesn't got big data of people who that they can identify as cold, rich, or well-off people. If you own a car, probably in the year 2014, uh, you are quite okay. If you own a Mercedes-Benz, you are probably quite okay. Today, it's still okay. So they just bought the company because they know who are the people on it. To tell you a little secret, if you have this further down the map, if you park your car at night in a certain place for seven days, so that means you live there, and then you drive the car out uh, seven o'clock in the morning, so you live there. If you Park the car, you go back for lunch at home, but every Tuesday or every Wednesday at lunchtime, you park your car in another residential area. They know you're having lunch with your son. Okay. Otherwise, you won't be having, I mean, you won't be parking your car in another residential area. And that is every Wednesday, Wednesday. So there must be. This is only a joke, but people told me that it's real. Now, from Gaudel Bach, lessons learned. Now, their success comes from to me who and what. When they started to launch, because of the male dominance on uh, in China having a driving license. Uh, in the year 2014, sorry, 2015, the male population, I mean, those people who own a driving license, roughly 85% 80, are male, 15% are female. 2018. Now, uh, if, if you are talking about 2004, 2014, the male population having a driving license is even more. Now, that is the reason why when they, when they, when they launched in Chile, they got the voice. Imagine, you know, I, I think I tell otherwise, you know, okay, if you download the app, you can hear in Chile, preach you when you switch it on. In Chile, greet you every morning when you start the app and say hello to you. When you switch it off in Chile, say goodbye to you in a very, very interesting instance. Yes, the male like it. I was uh, teaching in uh, Nepal and I uh, also got a little car. I alternate between in Chile, boys and Cantonese for obvious reasons. If I do not use Cantonese, I, I do not have to drive, but I enjoy having my voice every morning. But of course, now it's changing. Now, other than in Chile, they also have different dialectic tones. 
they have the uh, Taiwan is Mandarin, they have the uh, Sichuan dialect, they have no Western dialect, they have no Dan, they have no Bay, they have the uh, oh, Sichuan. So because of China got a very different uh, ethnic groups. So it would be very, very good. I mean, if you come from Sichuan, you switch on the Sichuan homes, you will feel comfortable. But that is one of the reasons why they are successful, because they know who, the word who, the government. And what, because they know what. So that to a very rigorous data collection and collaboration with call taxi, booking hotel, and uh, you know, booking air, air ticket, and so on. So, they collected the data. So it was worth 1,500 $1, million US dollars that Alibaba bought. So this is a success rate. Now, let's talk about failure case. Who got a medical or biology background? If you use the six W's properly, you should know Pfizer should not watch actual failure as a diabetes drug. What did they do? I figured it out. Now, so this is the background, you know, uh, analysts predicted that it would, the sales would be two billion US dollars a year in 2000. FDA approval in January 2006. So, in three years' time, they, somebody predicted that it was a 20 billion US dollar a year revenue in the market. So, that is big, right? Now, people always, I mean, with insider information, they will know when they, when they will get approval. One day before the FDA approval, price of one for 1.4 billion US dollars. One day before FDA approved. So you know, people know when FDA is going to start. Now, okay, let's look at the six W's. Why you should have issue better? M is must, right? When you talk about must and no one, stop you for If you have a job for diabetes, you know, it's a job. Safety is a must because it's a job. If it's not safe, it's not good. Accurate dosage or diabetes, it is quite okay. You know, there's a bit of margin, I was told. But accurate dosage is important for a life saving job. For the basic, because the diabetes usually it is a needle you get in your arm or get in your leg and uh, you get the drug. So this is my injection, the traditional method. So they are thinking about what about uh, something that is you don't need to get a needle for just easy to carry, but of course you need, need to be portable, not around the inches. Because if you have a if you want to get a needle for diabetes, you probably don't do it in public. Right? You probably go to the toilet, you probably go back to your whatever. And then you start to have your job because it is injectable. So existing offering is invasive, so you want something that's more invasive. So the market gap is obvious, you know, something portable, not invasive. And somehow they develop something that you can spray into your mouth. So this is the breakthrough. So they think about, they really think outside of the box. So what they could do for, so it is very simple. It's for diabetes. Spring in the mouth instead of having an injection. This is simple. Now, what about who? Now this is, important. this is the top reason why they stay. Now, okay, we talked about what the areas on who. Who are the customers? Customers are those who pay the bill. In the Western countries, in the US and the European countries, either the patient will pay 
or you have insurance, that's the insurance company to pay. So the one who pay the bill are either the patient or the insurance company. Usual, of course, is like this patient, otherwise you use it, recommend this one. Who will recommend the drug? You go to the doctor, the doctor say you have diabetes, so the doctor will recommend you the drug. Other injection or spray. Supporters, you know, okay, patient grow, other patients that you know, they will say, ah, you know, this drug is good, this one is not good, this is convenient. This is more convenient. So, supporters, not the blockers, or the separate trials. In this case, the medical doctors become supposed to be a supporter and recommender, and then they are the blockers, as well as, well as the insurance companies. Why? Because the drug, the spray, exobella, is the mouth cost twice as much as a legal injection. So the insurance companies you have no compelling reason to pay because you have the cheaper alternative. So some insurance company just do not pay. On the customer or the patient itself, safety not. By this diabetes drug spray in the mouth may affect your lungs function medically. So you need to go through a test to make sure that this drug will not interfere with your lung functions. So if you are a patient, so you have to go through the lung test. Okay. Now, if it doesn't have any negative effect today, it doesn't mean that. So basically, you should have no negative effect. But what about say, three months later, one month later, six months later, or one year later? You really don't know. So, should, will, you, will you as a patient take the risk? Concerning those age error. Now, when you have a needle, so five millimeter, five milliliter, you get an injection, so it's five millimeter. If you spray into the mouth, okay, you spray, it's supposed to be five millimeter. But what about the vapor will come out from or leak from the mouth? So you do not get five milliliters. Can you spray another time? I mean, another dose? Probably no. Otherwise, you will get overdosing. So, diabetes needles are so small and easy to carry. Okay, you can really, I mean, you really need to go to the hospital. Last delivery device are shown price. The insurance company will pay because it's paid up. So technically it is, it is portable, but uh, not small. Now this is the first version. We come up with the second version, which is small. But the first version is big. Okay, you know, just imagine you space the mouth on the two sides, it can be. The role of the doctor, the doctor is supposed to recommend, but for the, if you are a patient with a doctor that you are all, already taking the injection by the needle, there is no compelling reason for the doctor to recommend for you to change. Because so far so good it is working. When the doctor recommends a change, when it doesn't work, you die. Or you get more serious. Then you probably will sue the doctor in America and in the European country. So, as a medical doctor, why should I take my risk and ask you to change to another delivery method? Sometimes you have to think about the patient, you have to ask the patient to go for blood test, and then you cannot prescribe the medicine to give you. And you have to tell the patient that, you know, if you are on um, insurance, you have to check with your insurance company whether they will pay because it's going to cost you double. So on. When it is used, so it is simple, you know, when you need it, then uh, feel your uh, sugar level is not on the right level, so you get an injection. So it is easy when, where, you know, just when you need it. So when you need it, get an injection. How? Now, 
how you did a long test. You need to spray the biology, the particle development in the device, and if they leak, and you do not get the right dosage, and so on. So this is the how. So in August 2007, twice the set extra bureau revenue for the is only four million US dollars. In the whole of US, four million US dollars is very, very little. They only capture 1% of the insurance budget. 1% is very small. So in October 2007, the CEO said, because it failed to gain the acceptance of patients and physicians, so they discontinued and stopped selling the drug and write off 2.8 billion US dollars. Just imagine how many zero in 2.8 billion dollars. Including six hundred and sixty one million dollars of stock. So now, knowing the six of this, particularly if you really look into the whole, Pfizer should not be selling the job. You and I, I mean, okay, you know, like the teacher and someone who sometimes analyzes data cases and so on and so forth, you know. Understand from the very beginning that we that Pfizer should not be doing it. Okay. So, this is when medical doctors are supposed to be supported, the brokers, broker insurance company, and also the so they fail miserably in full to a certain extent. Also, so this is. Pfizer, extra error, why it didn't work. Now, okay, come back home to Hong Kong. Here, by the way, my own time check, you all heard about it, right? It didn't work. Another part of the sale, who be by in Hong Kong, April 2007. Not too long ago, four and a half years. Now, somehow, nine billion US dollar invested into the company by venture capitalists. Vision, Alibaba, Hong Kong, could be one of very famous one. They are joined by five others in Hong Kong, including also of China and all by the So totally five companies, totally six companies in Hong Kong doing it. It's a total of something like 30,000 bikes in Hong Kong. Interesting revenue model for these seven companies. Catch up by no deposit. I just cannot imagine no deposit. It's the most expensive stranger in that of the homes. Now, the charge for the bike is five dollars per 30 minutes, and catch up bike is two point five for 30 minutes. Now, this is really small money to make the peanut because basically, usually, half an hour is enough for you to do the job. What is the job? So, think about now. Actually, you know, to me, all share bikes in the world, they all fail. Even for those two in China, one is bought by Alibaba, the other bought by X. To me, they all fail. Go back to Hong Kong. Why? What is the market need? Why do you need to have a share bike? You want to go from it is for starting journey or what we call starting. Or final destination. Imagine you live in somewhere in the countryside, it's like a good uh, You want to go to the railway station, Taipo. So you try to get a bike. So it is from the start, starting journey at home. And then you end up in a transportation hub like NPR station or railway station. Now, 
Is there a must or a want to me that probably is not a must? There is a want, depending on who you are, on the scale of one to ten. You try to figure out whether it's fair on the scale. You want to do it because you want to your own time to drive a bike to that place instead of taking a shuttle, instead of walking, instead of you know, waiting for us. It is more convenient or you want to do some exercise. Okay? But are you sure you want to do the exercise in that particular gym? Existing offerings. Okay, shuttle bus, you know, from one place to another from your home. You can walk, you can have your own bike. You can rent a bike from a rental company, but probably you won't come in if you're living in a charity or living in some area charity that you can rent a bike to or the rest during the weekend. Market gap. Now, what is the pain? We always talk about existing offering and the preferred way of doing it. So there's a gap, there's a pain. So one cannot find a convenient or fast or cheap public transportation between two places. So that is the gap. So it is very painful. Not me. Uh, so the solution is you know you pick the convenient and faster or cheaper transportation between two places. So this is why you need a shared bike. In Hong Kong. Any other consideration? Okay, uh, other than going to work or going to school, leisure time, uh, during the holidays, on weekends, after, or during the holidays, you know, uh, it's good. You know, uh, you only pay two dollars fifty or five dollars for half an hour, so this is good price. What is the market size? Now? We really need to do a lot of research. In order to cover the market size, because the market is very diverse and complicated. Geographic possibility. Now, mainly it's local. It is not very exportable. I mean, the idea is not very exportable to other countries, even though you have also, you have all like from China and also from Japan. No technical problem because you know, you can just buy a bike. You know, uh, for a company to buy the bike, you will install the GPS and so on and so forth. Legal compliance, no technical barriers. It is also not as very, it is not scalable business, except for the capsule. What other markets? Primarily, it's between two places. For you to go to work or go to school. That's your time during a couple of holidays. Now, the market boundaries. Who can use it? Of course, you know, you need to know how to ride a bike. For me, I can't because I don't know how to ride a bike. I mean, I'm one of the very, very uh, few person in Hong Kong who can ride a bike. I try. I, I learned it when I was a kid for something like a half an hour. I think I'm about two hours. You have to dress properly. Right, okay, we'll talk about it when we come to primary market, no estate, no shuttle, and so on, so forth. Market size, really, very difficult to talk about people, potential market, people, addressable market, people market. It's very complicated. The market is so small in size, it is not worth doing. So nobody did. If they did it, they won't jump. Then they won't play. The practice, shuttle, walk, join, go for how oh, interesting. Customer and end users, of course, you may have seen it, you can only have male and female. But right that type of a bike, your two hands must be free. So you can put your suitcase, your handbag in the little basket. But it must be small enough 
the foot of it. Because the religion of two hands lead to right life. For the ladies, you can't have a knee skirt, you can't have a high skirt, it's quite high. For the men, and, and also no high heels. For the men, you can't have it when you wear a suit and a tie. Okay, you can have two formal clothes. For casual dress, walkers, like rather companies. We have seen some by strong, being strong in the Shingon River. Chucky. Because if you charge people $2.50 for half an hour, and then they charge something like $15 per hour, you're hurting the business. So when they see the price, they throw it in the business. So, who? Cool. So not a lot of people can find a bike to work or to go to school. Where now? This is Hong Kong. You can do it in the countryside, but you have to know where to pick it up. Okay, of course, there's a GPS, but make sure you know there's one nearby. Now, Hong Kong is very hidden. That type of a bike has no gear. It's a simple bike, no gear. Technically, you cannot ride up the hill. Not in Hong Kong, you cannot ride on the highway. It is against the law. You get a ticket from the police. No heavy traffic. Not in the CBT or in the urban area because you know where to park the bike. Imagine you ride a bike to Central, to Queen's Road, or you ride a bike to something like you work in Mason Road, Carlo. So you just can't do it. When? Now, this is serious. Mostly during the day. Now, when it is not raining. In Hong Kong, government statistics from the, world, from the Hong Kong Observatory, 137 days out of 365 days. So there is about slightly more than one third of the time Hong Kong. When it is very humid, you just don't want to ride bike. In Hong Kong, May to August, more than 80% relative humidity. On an average, is 77% relative humidity. Just to not ride bike in Hong Kong that often. When it is too cold, too hot, too windy, and there's a typhoon, you don't ride bike. When? How is interesting as a company, those six, seven companies, uh, they only need to buy the bike, install the uh, GPS, get a QR code, and then that's it. But the problem is you have to, because there is nowhere to technically park the bike, so you need to have a van or have a truck to collect the bike back to some of the destinations, and then it's very expensive. Hiring a truck of about the, uh, two and a half tons would probably pay a hundred, pay one thousand five hundred to one thousand for the bonus for it. That is very expensive. And that is a lot of uh, five dollars. For 30 minutes. Imagine you get five dollars for 30 minutes and then you pay 1,500 dollars for a truck to pay. You get all the right back. So, the failure case will be by started the company and 15 months they declare bankruptcy. And close. Only 50 months. People invested all the VCs, the two VCs invested nine US dollars. That's a lot of money for 50 months. But it's good. Fail fast and feel cheap. Not, not that cheap, but fail fast. Only now I have the uh, information up to May 2019. 
only three companies left. I think now there's only one company left. Uh, it is the, 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 the uh, university station. Only one company left. This is the uh, very difficult that a company fail on all the six companies. So this is a classic case where who healing and so so good by transportation, who the dress limitation when the climate also is not conducive to riding a bike to work into school, expensive for the operator to retrieve the bike. But of course, you know, for you and I, it's good. I mean, price wise, maximum is five dollars for 30 minutes. You get a cheap one. Only pay half two two dollars fifty. How could it's ready for them to take the pay back? Why the Hong Kong market is so small? So, okay. so imagine nine million US dollars invest in a company and fail to do something. Really, just for them. Okay, so what we talk about today, we introduce the importance of market identification, conceiving, fine tuning, and designing of inner product using the 6W approach to validate your value proposition. Basically, your value proposition is your market pain. Okay, your niche that you want to adjust the market. We summarize the success of counter documents. We analyze exuberant even though we have no medical or even biology data. We analyze your bicycle. It's interesting that you know, a company can fail on all the six companies. Now, okay, go back home for case study or higher data down. Hong Kong food truck. This is John Zhang, the former financial secretary of uh, Beijing. Sorry, I'm sure he will be sorry to see that on the 1st of June this year. The operation is going to be done. And uh, very interesting, if you look at the case that I analyzed, they should know that, I mean, people should know that in the train. Not because he's, uh, I mean, it's John Zhang's baby, but why? They fail in why? Why they should have food truck? And then King Labs. King Labs is a company uh, that used the, the product is called Handy, which is a smartphone uh, put into the hotel uh, for book services. At the highest point, they have 600,000 Handy phones into. 60,000 hotels in the world. And it is a unicorn. And it failed. And uh, they do not fail cheap, they do not fail fast. But uh, for those people, that's a, you know, some of the biggest names that you can imagine in that including including the force of the uh, you know, most of the big name yes. the seminar hasn't ended please uh, I'm sure you all got a smartphone please scan the QR code and uh, send it to me now uh, Please uh, give me your email address, otherwise I can't do it. Now, uh, it will not be necessary for you to, now, you need to uh, put some numbers on your mobile phone, but uh, you don't need to give me your real mobile phone, you can just say 111111. Into eight digit is okay. Somehow, I don't know, you know, the, uh, the form that I got, you know, they need you to somehow, to your mobile phone, uh, send it to me. But of course, you know, please give me your 
comments, whether you like it, and what in particular, what are the areas that you look like? And what improvements and what other things you would like to have uh, in the future? Uh, your feedback is very valuable because this is probably my best version of market application. All the changes are based on the feedback that I'm receiving. Every time I do the seminar, I pass this to you. In my first few versions, I have no pictures, no channel, all these people. And because you know, people say, you know, red is you know, very um, boring, I need to put some pictures or put a whole food, you know, push it the food. So that must be the selection. So in a few days, I'm going to give the back of the information. I'll send you back. Uh, the um, the one. Now, uh, for those uh, participants who are in the office or at home, uh, also please, you know, uh, scan the QR code and send it back to me. Hopefully, you can do it within. Uh, two to three days, uh, so this is what I promise. Uh, send you back in three days' time. Uh, so I will still be looking at your feedback after three days, but uh, you will do me a favor, you know, so that I can do everything in one go. So now, uh, okay, uh, for those of I mean, they are still busy, you know, I don't know, uh, one of the items. Uh, I think that uh, interesting of the date, I don't know why it's extremely difficult, but, but it works. I mean, you have to just have a little bit of patience. Interesting the date, uh, sometimes a little bit longer time. So, uh, for those of you, I know that some of you completed, uh, just takes you something like uh, two to three minutes. So now it's the Q&A time. So, any questions? Any questions? Any questions? All right, so, so I mean, there is no question. I always think that you know, either my presentation is so cool, you don't know what to ask, or to understand it all, so nothing to ask. So I prefer, you know, to make myself a bit happy. So it's the letter. Yes, okay. thank you, Fred. Uh, we would like to ask you for the people who fail in their startup, what do they end up doing uh, later in their career? So, is does that experience? To buy them to something that in uh, the corporate world. Okay, now, uh, if you are not launching your companies or your products, please think about think about the six W's. Hopefully, after you go through the process, uh, will reduce your chance of failure. Now, for those who really fail, now if they find out there is no market for the product, think about another product that you are familiar with. As I said earlier in the uh, very early in the, in the beginning, you must know the you must have the domain knowledge of how the market works. You know how to produce on a technical basis, how to produce a product yourself without no sourcing. So Think about this now. If it really doesn't work, it's okay that you go to work for somebody else. Now, with that entrepreneurial spirit and experience of failing, sometimes you go to work for a company that's a simple intrapreneur. Entrepreneur is you to work for yourself. Intrapreneur is you work in a company that the company gives you the free hand. To work like an entrepreneur on a product, but you have all the backup of the company, but you have the free hand of just having, like having your own company. Then you don't have to worry about uh, renting the office, decorating the office, your HR, employment, buy a photocopier, and you know, all these things, and pay for the electricity bill. So, this is interesting. So, with this entrepreneurial experience of even failure, 
it may be good on the resume to work for me. I told the point, you, you tell the potential boss that I think, but I know I think, but I'm not going to do my own company. I will for you. I'll make sure that you know when I work for you, I won't fail your boss. But that is the, I mean, we are all sales. So, all right, so any other questions from the floor? Oh, good. So I guess that's the end of our seminar today. So um, thank you very much, Brett, for your sharing. Um, thank you, um, all the technical people, for your participation on site and on Zoom. Tomorrow uh, morning, there will be a very fun session uh, held by Nicholas. Um, make sure you come here to join that section. And in the afternoon, we'll be having a mentoring section. So there will be a lot of mentors uh, from different tracks to come here to give you some advice. So definitely come here um, if you look for some uh, advice before you submit your deck. All right. So um, if you have any other questions for Fred, feel free to stay. And be sure to scan this QR code and give Fred some um, of your feedback. And if you want to uh, get a hold of PowerPoint afterwards. All right. So thank you very much, uh, everyone, for your participation. Thank you.